Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Sparesbox. Today we're going to do a how-to on how to wire your trailer. A um, little bit of a simple project today. This is our enclosed box trailer for, well, originally this was for Drag Challenge Weekend, which unfortunately, due to the current situation, uh, that event's been uh, basically cancelled this year. Um, although that event's not happening, we're hoping that Drag Challenge, the five-day event in Victoria in November will happen. So with that in mind, we're going to continue along with this project. Um, we've recently sent it away to be painted, so it's white, the same colour as the Cresta. It did come to us grey. It was like this ugly hammer tone finish, which was really thick, and we couldn't even put stickers on it. Uh, we've also cut the mud guards off. We've got some cool Jap wheels to put on it, as usual. Uh, it's currently got my car trailer wheels on it, just so we could check the mud guard width. The axle's currently too wide, so we've got a narrow axle coming for it. Um, but yeah, so going to do a full rewire on it and put all LED lighting in it, put some marker lights on it, should be pretty cool. Um, going back to the Drag Challenge Drag Week thing, um, big announcement, we're not gonna be doing Drag Week 2020, unfortunately. Same thing with the current climate, we can't risk sending the car to America and then the event being canceled after we've shipped it. Um, it's a pretty big financial commitment, both from us and from our sponsors. So we really don't wanna ask those guys to risk money and we can't afford to risk our own money sending the car only for the event to be cancelled. On the same token, we can't really afford to leave the car in America for 18 months either. So unfortunately with that in mind, we are gonna be not taking the Cresta back to the States this year. Um, moving forward to next year, we don't know what's gonna happen yet. Um, we would love to go back again, but we don't know what's gonna happen. Um, the Mustang is still in the States for everyone that always asks about it. Um, we appreciate all the love and support with that car as well. Um, Benny still owns it, it's still all going ahead. Um, it's actually at Customs by Biggin at the moment getting some chassis work done. Those guys are chipping, it, chipping away at it in the background. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of upgrades happening for that car which we were going to debut this year at Drag Week. Um, if the event does still happen, we may go over and just run the Mustang. Um, I do have a guaranteed spot, so potentially I can enter the Mustang and Benny can be the second driver. Um, that is kind of the unofficial team plan at this stage, but um, yeah, realistically, I don't think the event's actually going to happen at all, but Hot Rod haven't confirmed or denied any of that. So, um, yeah, we've, we've kind of made the executive decision on our half or on our end. Um, obviously, team safety is number one. Um, America's pretty badly affected at the moment, so we don't want to go into a potentially hazardous environment. Uh, also, the other issue is we can't even get travel insurance when we're in the States currently because it has been declared a pandemic. No insurance companies are insuring anyone. We can't travel. I can't even book an international flight if I wanted to to the US. So um, all these factors combined have basically knocked that event on the head for us this year as far as taking the car. Like I said, we may go over and run the Mustang, but I mean, it's, it's too early to call it either way, but I have to make the decision early on the Cresta um, just, to, just to isolate us and protect us from potential financial disaster basically. So. Um, yeah, with that in mind, sorry guys, we're definitely not going to take the Cresta to the States this year, but uh, all things going well, potentially we'll be back next year. Um, but enough on that, we're going to get back into the trailer, um, run our wiring all through. We've got brand new seven core cabling, we've got some LED lighting, and we've also got a heap of connectors and heat shrink and crimping pliers and all sorts of fun stuff. So let's get into it. Obviously this trailer has had wiring before, so a handy little tip uh, to save you guys heaps of time and pain. Um, even, even when you chop everything out, if the cabling's already running through a channel or a, or a beam, I just cut it off at either end and what I'm gonna do is actually tape uh, the new cable to the old cable and, and just use the old cable as a draw so that it's heaps easier than trying to manually feed the cable through, especially being that this goes through a hole in the, in the rail, not, not through the end of it. Another handy tip uh, to save on wasting 300 mm cabling is actually just to leave the cabling on the spool while you run it. So you can basically set your lengths rather than running it from that end and cutting it or taking a punt. Like we've, we've got a 30 meter roll there only because we're gonna be doing some more trailer wiring. Um, but yeah, it'll definitely minimize any wastage. So we've basically measured it out. Um, the Nava taillights that we're using also have uh, like a 500 millimeter extension on the back of them. So we're actually going to join the left tail light and the number plate light together and then terminate it to this wire. 
so it should make it a bit easier and uh, less joins, so should make it pretty neat. Um, so basically we've got the two tail lights, the number plate light, and we've also got four marker lights that we're going to put um, up on the top edge of the trailer. I'm not exactly sure how we're going to cable that stuff up yet. We'll most likely run it through this back corner and up, up the, uh, the rear corner of the trailer. Then we'll run forward and then we'll run across and forward to power all the lights. Uh, they're all LEDs, so it should be pretty neat. And there's basically zero current draw compared to if they're all incandescent bulbs. So it should be nice and simple and we'll uh, keep wiring away. It is worth mentioning that Narva actually do a, uh, a basic trailer wiring kit that you can buy with uh, the wiring and all the lights uh, basically bundled into a kit. Um, I basically just want a bit more fancy and change the lights up. So we just bought all the componentry separately. Um, Sparesbox do list all of it uh, either separately or as the kit. So it's uh, pretty handy no matter which way you want to pick it up. Obviously a lot of trailers you can run a lot larger lights than these. I just went, went these because they're nice and simple but being an LED they'll still put a lot of lights out. Um, all the Nava stuff's also uh, ADR compliant whereas some of the Chinese or eBay stuff probably isn't compliant. Um, I bought some other tail lights previously for another trailer. Uh, none of that stuff was compliant. Um, the only thing I don't have here is some reflectors. They're still coming. Um, but yeah, we'll basically get all the wiring done today and then stick the reflectors on. Uh, we're also going to put a lot of reflective tape on the edges of the doors so when they're up at night time, if, if we're broken down on the side of the road, there's plenty of uh, visible light and reflected light. So yeah, trying to minimise any potential hazards on the side of the road. But we'll uh, crack these open and start to work out our wiring lengths and then we'll be good to go. That's nice, so it's all, it's all actually sealed so there's no chance of getting water in there which is super handy for a trailer. Obviously these are probably designed with a marine application in mind for boat trailers and whatnot as well so having them completely sealed is definitely a winner. Obviously we're not going to be launching jet skis out of this thing but should the need arise we have waterproof tail lights. This uh, number plate light's a little bit different to the, the tail lights in that the, the wiring's actually not moulded into the body of the light, it's just moulded into the lens. So to stop the wiring actually pulling through and straining and potentially actually damaging that joint in there, I've just tied a little knot so it gives a nice little bit of uh, flexibility in that cable. Uh, obviously there's not going to be a lot of strain on it but to protect the light and, and to uh, basically just increase the longevity of it, just tie a quick knot in it and that'll then just sit in the body and then it's not going to pull through or damage the wiring. If you've got a tip for removing this, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Other than chopping it off, because I know that one. Here we go. Just for ease of wiring up everything, we buy only seven core cable. Um, obviously this car, oh sorry, this trailer doesn't have brakes. So we don't need the, uh, the blue wire. That's the service brake if we've got uh, electric brake circuit. So I'm just going to chop that straight off. And also black we don't need. Can't remember what black is, but I'll tell you right now. Reverse lights. So we don't have reverse lights either on this trailer. So we're back to four, oh, to five core here. So now that I've cut that off, I'm just going to chuck a bit of heat shrink on it just to keep it neat. Get the old Bunsen burner out again. Decided to get a bigger one.
So we've run our main cable from the, the front to the back. We've now done our first breakout, that's the right hand tail light. And this is our uh, park light or our clearance light breakout as well. So we'll probably just run that through the floor and up the pillar. And we've now got everything to go to the left side of the trailer, which is also gonna pick up our number plate light because essentially that's just a park light as well. So we're just gonna join all of that together on one connector. And then we're gonna join this back into here as well. So um, one thing to note, the connectors we're using on this won't physically fit through the body of the trailer if you have to take the lights out, but the pins will. So if you do have to pull these back through later, you just got to take the pins off the, the connector off the pins and then slide it through. So we can, we can pull it apart. Um, the only other thing we are going to do, which will make, make that not easy, is we're going to join the, the park light circuit straight to this. So you just have to cut the park light off. But I mean, we shouldn't have to pull the tail lights out anyway. So, um, but yeah, just be mindful of that if you do have to go pulling stuff apart. Um, the other thing worth mentioning, same deal. This has chain links that someone's welded to support the wiring, so the connectors won't fit through that. So same thing, I'll just put some pins on this before we run it through. Then once it's run, I'll put the housing on it once it's gone through. So we've got our uh, left indicator, park light, our brake light, and also ground. So we've uh, maintained a full ground circuit on the trailer, so it actually returns back to the car. Um, on, on older cars that doesn't matter, but on, on some late model stuff they can use that for sensing and all sorts of weird stuff, so um, yeah, just got to keep, keep an eye on it. So we've got all of our under trailer wiring done now. We've got our indicators left and right, our brake lights, our park lights, and obviously a number plate light. We've uh, made a little bit of a junction on the passenger side of the trailer. So that we've only actually got two connectors. Um, the only trick to keep in mind is with the, the tail lights, the right tail light is literally color for color. And the left tail light, the, uh, the green goes to yellow. Um, they obviously just make one tail light for left and right. But yeah, on the right hand side, the colors are 100% correct. On the left hand side, the left indicator on the 7 or 5 core wire is yellow, but on the tail light obviously it's still green, just, yeah, just probably for manufacturing simplicity. So we've got all that done, now we're going to terminate it at the trailer end, or at the drawbar end. Once that's done, we'll finish off with doing all of our, uh, our marker lights, and then we'll be finished for the day. I always forget which orientation the plugs are, even though I've wired a fair few trailers. So most of the good connectors come with a map on the back of it. Um, the only other uh, trap for young players is to make sure you put the thing I just dropped on the ground and the, uh, and the nut, put them on the wiring before you put it into the connector because you can guarantee you'll do the best wiring job ever and forget to put these two bits on. Um, you've got to put the nut, then the rubber collar on and that actually locks the connector together. So it's pretty neat, there's no screws on these. Um, I like using these because if you're on the side of the road with uh, minimal tools, you can generally fix stuff or get it going again uh, without using any tools so yeah nice little simple connector and nice simple setup
got all of our wiring done. We've got our tail lights in. Obviously, we've got our number plate light. Got all of our marker lights. We've run the loom all the way to the front. We've got our connector on the front. Everything's sweet. So now, the moment of truth, we're going to push it out and back the ute in and give it a proper light check. Um, obviously, trailer plugs are a trailer plug. They're all wired to a standard. So in theory, if this works on the, tra on the ute, it should work on any car with a seven pin flat plug. So we'll back it in and hook it up and fingers crossed everything works. Oh, kind of thought you were watching. No, it wasn't Stitched up. It's all right, I'm pretty sure I went knob to ball. No, no, that was already yeah. there. Okay. Right indicator. Right indicator. Left. Well, that wraps up our uh, how-to to wire up trailer lights. Everything worked pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the outcome. Plugged it straight in. It worked first time, so tune with that. Thanks to the guys at Spares Box for supplying the Nava stuff and all the uh, electrical connectors from Raceworks. All that stuff's available on sparesbox.com.au if you do want to do your own trailer wire up. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.